I want to start off by sending, uh, thanking John D. Francisco, our ranker on finance, the wonderful finance staff that we have on the Republican side, and each and every Republican member for participating in this part of the budget process since they were put on our desks, and really to expose the deficiencies and really how bad this budget is that the Democrats passed and that we voted against, and how anti-family, how anti-business this budget is. We start off by the process. My good friends on the Democrat side of the aisle pledged to the people of the state of New York when they campaigned to become the majority party how things would be different. Well, they are certainly different because they managed the three Democrats' leaders from New York City to make this the biggest sham and the most disgraceful way to negotiate a budget. And really what is unconscionable to me, especially when so many of the members here campaigned on transparency and the fact that there would be openness, there would be a vibrant discussion of issues, that everybody would be involved. What you did by this process is not just close out us as Republicans and representing almost 30 percent, almost 50 percent of the state. But what's really unforgivable is that you shut out the people of this great state. You shut out the media. And we all at times have difference with the media. We may not like what they write sometimes or what they put on TV or radio. But part of our process of government is for the media to challenge us, to let the public know what's going on, and for us to be part of the process, both Republicans and Democrats. And what we saw from the three leaders from New York City was a sh total shutdown of that process. They closed the curtains, they went behind closed doors, everything that every single one of you here said would not happen, would not happen if you gain the majority. It is the worst display of arrogance that I've ever seen in Albany since I've been here now for my 25th year. We may have had disagreements on process in the past, but under the Senate majority, we opened up the process. We started joint conference committees. There were resolutions. There were budgets put out on the floor. There were joint conference committees. There was something out there for us to see as members, but even more important, for the press to see and for our public to see, our voters, our taxpayers, those who are struggling, those who have had it, like Senator Fischillo indicated. And nobody ever said it better on this floor than Senator George Maziarz, who spoke so eloquently on behalf of the hardworking, overtaxed families of New York State. So, in all honesty, I can say this has been a great process. I can not say or accept when some will say these are difficult times, so difficult choices had to be made, and they had to be made behind closed doors. A governor who has indicated, and he was going to be a great reformer, how the process would be open. 
And then he says, well, you can't negotiate a, a, a budget in public. Why not? Why can't you negotiate a budget in public? We represent the people. And they have a right to know what we're negotiating. Not just a couple of days before these are plopped thousands of pages on our desks. And they're expected to go through that and understand fully how these documents impact their everyday lives. The people of the state of New York, our hardworking folks, have really had it. I have never, never in all the years that I've been here, and I've dealt with difficult budgets, have I seen an outpouring of disgust, anguish, and fear by my constituents and by all of the constituents that we represent on this side of the aisle, and quite frankly, that you represent on your side of the aisle. Republicans, Democrats. And yet, the Democrat side of the aisle, the Democrat governor and the Democrat speaker, you turned your backs on those people. You didn't make tough choices. You just overspent, and you taxed. Tax, make it, just keep taxing. By raising taxes the way you did, $8 billion to spend $13 billion more and growing. That's the coward's way of doing it by raising taxes. That's the easy way. That's not the hard way. You put some figures together, you pop up some percentage points, you attack the so-called rich, you don't tell the people that it's the small business people that you're attacking with income tax increases, the utility increases, the fee increases. That's why you wanted to be behind closed doors. Because you did not want the people of the state of New York to know what you were going to do to them. You didn't listen to Tom DiNapoli, the Democrat controller, who said this budget is totally out of whack and unsustainable, not just now, but down the road. So, Mr. President, I'm just going to conclude by saying thank you to my Republican colleagues for standing up for middle-income families, for hard-working families, for people that are holding down sometimes two and three jobs to make ends meet. I thank you for standing up. And I hope when my friends on the Democrat side of the aisle go home, that they listen to the people in their districts. They listen to them about what you did to small businesses, what you've done to utility rates, what you've done to increase the cost of health insurance premiums what you've done to increase license fees, registration fees, tax on wine, tax on beer, tax on cigar, anything. You taxed it. And that was wrong. So hopefully, hopefully at some point, the Democrats will come to your senses. The governor will come to his senses. He does have an opportunity to eliminate through veto some of these things, but I hope you come to your senses and understand that this is not about patting yourself on the back and say, what a great job we did during these difficult times. Your job is to represent the people of this state, your constituents, and not make their lives more difficult during these difficult recession economic times. So I appreciate, Mr. President, the courtesy for allowing me to speak.